I'm so excited to be here. I um, love these virtual um, meetings, but I miss seeing all of you in person. I hope to be uh, to be actually at the actual meeting next time. But without further ado, I'm really excited to to review um, quite a bit of data with you today. Um, I think that we've got lots of um, information and lots of exciting things. It's really going to dovetail nicely with uh, Dr. Cabelli's talk. Um, so without kind of delaying any further, these are my disclosures. I work in drug development, so I work with all the companies. But just like my kids, I do not have a favorite. Other disclosure, there's no way I can cover everything cool that's going on right now in ovarian cancer. And I'm going to try, so it's going to be a lot of information, um, but I'll, uh, I'll try to hit the high points for you. But I just want you to leave with a sense of hope and that sense that we always love to have here at Overcome, that there is more coming down the pike every single day. Um, and so we, we hold on to that hope and know that we're going to continue to find a cure for this disease. So with that, you've already gotten a really nice primer on ovarian cancer, but I just wanted to give you a thought. I, I'm going to focus on recurrent ovarian cancer, not because I think that's the most important place. I think every single part along the treatment continuum is important, but because a lot of our drug development happens in recurrent ovarian cancer, and then we move it up front. Things like PARP inhibitors started in recurrence and then moved up front. And so there's a lot of excitement about what we see in the recurrent setting and how it might be impactful even earlier and hopefully cure more patients. But as a reminder, the amount of time that it takes after upfront platinum to when there's a recurrence gives us a sense of what might work. And where we really do a lot of our drug development is in that so-called platinum resistant group where our chemotherapy, it's only been about three to six months since the completion of chemotherapy before the cancer comes back. Response rates sit at about 20%. And let's just refresh, response rate means shrinkage of disease. And so we're always looking to improve that bar, to improve the amount of time which it takes for cancer to grow. And that's that PFS or progression-free survival. So I'm going to go through probably about four different overarching topics that have been explored in some degree in ovarian cancer. And again, it's not all of the potential options, but just some of the things that I'm most excited about. So first, anti-angiogenic. These are agents that target the vasculature, the blood supply to the tumor, and they'll target it and cut it off, as well as target the cancer directly. Bevacizumab is the best known and kind of arguably the um, most well-established drug in this space. Many of you might have received it either in upfront setting in combination with your chemotherapy or in the recurrent setting. When we're talking about patients for whom platinum is not an option, that platinum resistance setting, we look at the Aurelia trial, which took chemo, standard chemo, and added bevacizumab to it and found people lived longer without their cancer coming back, progression-free survival. And you can see that curve on the left. Those of you that have seen me talk before, will remind, I'll remind you that if you can get your thumb in between the curves, that's a positive result. So this was a positive result. And importantly, patients felt better. Patient reported outcomes were better when we added bevacizumab. But as you can see by these curves, more and more patients progress as time goes on. And that is a problem. And so we do want to explore how to overcome resistance to bevacizumab to our one of our best agents. So one of the things that we've explored is um, drugs that act on known mechanisms of resistance. And so specifically, there's a pathway called NOTCH. And that NOTCH pathway has been found to be active in tumors that are bevacizumab resistant. And so we tried to block it. And the way we blocked it was with something called DLL4. And when we blocked it all by itself, it was pretty good. When we blocked it with bevacizumab, it was okay. But when we did a combination of the two, VEGF, which is the bevacizumab, DLL4, which is the notch inhibitor. Wow, it was really cool. And further, if we added chemo, then it was even better. So we took that into a clinical trial. 
And on the left, this was a drug called Navasixabab, okay? And it's a dual DLL4 and VEGF inhibitor. And when we looked at it as a single agent, it had a 25% response rate. And you'll remember, I said that's similar to chemo. So that's not too shabby. But when we combined it with paclitaxel, standard chemotherapy, the response rates approached 33% for people that had had Avastin and 64% for people that had not. So indicating to us a very nice active drug. And this drug is moving forward in a phase three trial that will be open soon, comparing it to weekly paclitaxel. Now that's our anti-angiogenics. An area that I've been very passionate about and those of you that have seen me speak before will remember this, are antibody drug conjugates. And I think this is one of the next line for personalized medicine, really teasing out what is going on in your tumor and using a drug to target it. So as a reminder, as an education, what these are is there's three pieces. There's the antibody piece. That's the piece that finds your cancer. So it's a key that goes into the lock of your cancer. Once that lock in key mechanism happens, it brings the drug inside it. And that drug is a high, high dose chemotherapy, something I could never give you in your vein or by mouth but it brings that high dose chemotherapy into the cancer and kaboom explodes and kills the cancer and also cells around it. So very cool. And what's really cool about this is you can have different antibodies. So you can have different keys to fit different cancer locks. I'm not gonna go through this table in detail, but just know there's many antibody drug conjugates and targets that are exciting in, an, in ovarian cancer. And I'm gonna talk to you about some of the drugs that are furthest along. The first is Mervituximab. Now I'm gonna call it Merv. Now this drug has been being explored in ovarian cancer for a while. Early phase one studies showed really nice reduction, just like we saw with the last drug. The first randomized trial though, that compared the Mervituximab to any chemo that you could think of actually didn't show a positive trial. And we were all completely shocked. Turns out it was because we didn't use the target. We didn't check well enough for the lock. And so those two curves on the top oops, were basically showing us, look, can you fit your thumb in there? You cannot. But when they did a better job of testing for the lock, the folate receptor alpha, which is what this drug targets, then you can see some nice separation. So this drug went on to be studied further in two different trials, the Surreya trial, as well as Mirasol. Now, Mirasol has not yet been reported, but Surreya has. And Surreya led to an FDA approval for our patients. So you can receive Mervituximab if you have folate receptor alpha high. So if your tumor has that, that lock, that folate receptor alpha, you can see that the benefit was about 30% reduction in tumor. But more importantly, look at this little swimmer. So the swimmer plots, the lane, each lane is a patient and how long she stays on drug is her lane. So you can see patients stayed on for over a year and a half to two years. So when this drug works, it can work very, very well. And importantly, it worked in people that had PARP inhibitors. It worked in people that had, had multiple lines of therapy. And so that led to that FDA approval. So if you haven't had your tumor tested for that, you need to talk to your doctor, and I'm happy to talk to them for you um, to get it tested. Now, here's another drug that's coming um, that's also very exciting. It's called Upri or Upafitimab, real Zidotin, but we'll stick with Upri. It's another antibody drug conjugate. It's key or its lock is NAPI 2B, which is a calcium, phosph uh, calcium um, phosphate transporter. And it has another special, very, very high dose um, chemotherapy payload, which is called AFHPA. Um, and they're using potentially tumor testing to look for that NAPI 2B and determine who would benefit most. In an early phase trial, they focused on ovarian cancer because they knew this was an important lock for ovarian cancer. <clears throat> and what they found was a really nice reduction. Now, this is a waterfall plot. 
you guys know I'm always going to teach you about all these crazy uh, graphs I show you. So waterfall is a falling. If it's falling, it means reduction in tumor. So we like to see lots of reduction in tumor. And you can see overall, most patients got benefit, either reduction or even just stabilization of their disease. But interestingly, the middle dose group did best. So higher dose didn't necessarily mean better outcomes. And so this dose of 36 milligrams per kilogram has been chosen as um, the dose to move forward. And it is moving forward in an ongoing trial, patients with platinum resistant ovarian cancer that have had one to four lines of therapy. So this is actively enrolling and the goal is for an FDA approval. So fingers crossed, another ADC or antibody drug conjugate for us. Okay, now for something completely different, immunotherapy. So immunotherapy is when we harness the body's immune system to treat cancer, to fight disease. And thus far, those of you that are in the know will know that the single agent immunotherapies haven't been that awesome for ovarian cancer for at least the kind of high grade tumors. We have seen some benefit in some of the more rare tumor types like clear cell. But to date, we're still searching for the right way to do immunotherapy for ovarian cancer. So enter Nemvolucan Alpha. This is a really cool drug. It's an engineered cytokine. So cytokines basically help stimulate our immune system. And they basically have been very hard to give IV uh, because they cause a lot of side effects like fevers and chills and just overall feeling pretty cruddy. So Nemvolucan Alpha is really cool because it basically gets into the system and doesn't cause as much of the systemic event, uh, effects. So you get the benefit of stimulating the immune system without all the nasty side effects. So Artistry 1 took Nemvolucan alone and in combination with Pembrolizumab, which is an um, immune uh, checkpoint inhibitor, a stimulator of the immune system, and found that that combination was very, very well tolerated. The safety was pretty reasonable. There were adverse events, but serious adverse events were in less than 50% of patients, and most were as expected for, um, for cytokines of chemotherapy uh, uh, type side effects. And in a small study, granted, they saw a lot of patients with reduction in disease. And again, looking at that swimmer lane, patients stayed on for a really long time. So this is being explored in a phase three study, um, the Artistry 7 study, where they're combining it with pembrolizumab. So perhaps the way that immunotherapy is going to break into ovarian cancer, but if not, there's also a really cool technology called adoptive cell therapy. Now, this is when we actually take out your fighting T cells, your fighting immune cell, and change them in some way to help them be more effective. And then we put them back into your bloodstream and watch for good results. So that's called CAR T cell therapy. And there are a number of different CAR T cell therapies that are under exploration, but the one that's farthest along for patients with ovarian cancer is this really easy title, ADP A2 M4 CD8. So this is a CAR T cell therapy that is focusing on a, a, a lock. It's similar to that lock and key with antibody drug conjugates. That lock is called Mage A4. So for patients that's tumors express this target, this potentially can work to get your body's immune cells to fight the cancer in a more focused way. In the early phase study, which was called SURPASS, um, they found a really nice reduction in disease overall. And again, you guys are savvy now. You know what these waterfall plots are. Most patients that had that MAGE A4 had reduction in their disease. And this wasn't an all comers, but specifically in the top left here is patients with ovarian cancer. Almost every single one had reduction of disease or clinical benefit with stabilization of disease. So this, I'm going to sound like a broken record. This is moving into a phase three trial. So I want you to take away how exciting this is that almost every drug we've talked about so far is moving into a phase three trial. Phase three means we're close to FDA approval. So very exciting days ahead. I do have a few more things to talk about and I'm mindful of the time that I'm between you and lunch, um, but let me bear with me for probably another five minutes as I talk on some of my favorites. So you heard a little bit about ways to combine PARP with other agents and the whole goal 
is that we know for some patients, PARP works and then it stops working. And for others, PARP never works. Their tumor is inherently resistant. So we're very interested in overcoming that resistance and allowing more people to be able to receive a drug that has been quite effective. Now, there's a number of mechanisms that have been explored, including activation of other pathways where the tumor just gets smart and it finds ways around what we're inhibiting. And so we're trying to get smart. So we have tried different um, inhibiting other pathways in order to sensitize tumors to part. And we've done things like PI3 kinase. We've done things like ATR. And I don't have time, I'm sorry to say, to get into all the science here because it's so much. But these are potential options that are now going into, say it with me, phase three trials. So very exciting to see that we might be able to expose more patients to PARP inhibitors in a more successful way. And then finally, I'm just going to touch on a few other targets of interest that, that I'm most excited about. Um, one is um, reliquorlent. So this is going into a completely different direction. This is using physiology against ovarian cancer. So when we have cortisol, which is a natural steroid um, that is in our uh, system, this actually suppresses um, immune activation and um, break down the tumor. Okay, so if we can block that natural cortisol with a glucocorticoid inhibitor, we potentially can help patients like you um, and fight ovarian cancer. So reliquorlent does that. It blocks the glucocorticoid receptor. Now, this is a study that was reported by Dr. LaRusso where they used reliquorlent, the glucocorticoid receptor inhibitor, with chemo in a couple of different ways and found that when they gave the it, reliquorlent in an intermittent fashion, so not continuous, and gave it with chemo, that it was better than just chemo alone or the reliquorlent in a continuous way. So again, looking at that, you can get your thumb in between the green and blue. That was a positive trial. So there's a phase three trial enrolling right now. So another potential option. Quickly, AVP500 is an axle inhibitor, which basically uh, binds to um, a ligand of called GAS6. This is highly expressed in ovarian cancer, has been shown to be contribute to metastasis and to tumor genesis and to just bad outcomes for patients with ovarian cancer. So we want to block that bad guy. And when we combine it with chemo, it's safe. And the response rates approach 40%, which was, again, extremely exciting. So there is a phase three trial with that drug. And now for something completely different. This stuff is really cool. So this little machine you place these pads on you. It's called tumor treating fields. It exerts these electrical fields that change our tubulin proteins. And that is exactly what chemo does, actually. That's exactly what taxanes like Paclitax will do. And so you're getting a chemo-like effect, but just by um, ex utilizing this machine with electric fields, and it disrupts your formation of your mitotic sp spindle. So it's been very exciting. It's actually FDA approved in um, glioblastoma as well as mesothelioma. So we thought, why not try to hit the tumor where it hurts in two places? So disrupt the mitotic spindle with paclitaxel and with tumor treating fields and found in a single arm study, it was very, it seemed to work very well. So guess what? phase three trial. So this trial is done enrolling and we're eagerly anticipating act, um, the, the report on this, but hopefully soon we'll be all wearing little backpacks treating our cancers while we walk around shopping. So bottom line, the future is bright. We've got a lot, we had a lot to talk about. I didn't even get into everything I wanted to, just being mindful of our time. So we'll have to get together again so I can go through everything else. But we have a lot of opportunities for patients with ovarian cancer. If you are actively receiving treatment, I encourage you to consider clinical trials and to talk to your practitioner about what options might work for you. And of course, I'm happy to talk to you, all of you at any time and take any questions. So thank you so much for your attention.